Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Recently, I did a video on how to grow hydroponic tomato inside. And also I did a time lapse showing how the fruits grow. And those two videos basically show this same plant over here. So this plant has been in this uh, grow room for quite a while. Uh, people have been wondering how the plant is doing, if it's still alive and uh, what's uh, the status. So today I'm going to show you what the plants look like. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about it, answer some questions, and then we're going to pick some fruits and try them out. For those that are wondering how the plant is doing, it is still doing amazing, uh, growing like crazy, and as you can see, it has fallen over. So uh, to grow tomato indoors, you have to have a way to uh, kind of like hold it up, uh, like a trellis system or something like that that would work well. Uh, make sure it stay up <laughs> and upright that way uh, um, you know it doesn't fall over like this when it's upright it's easier to manage and it's easier to change uh, nutrients and all that stuff uh, also you will have to do a lot of pruning so uh, as you can see I have done so much pruning on these plants right here because they are indeterminate so they grow out of control so in order for me to control them, I have to cut off lots and lots of branches. So anytime they grow way out of control um, at the top, like a vine, uh, sometimes they'll grow past the light. And they often do that because that's, that's what they do. And then uh, those that pass the light would not get enough, so they're going to start to stretch. And when they stretch, they become like a vine and it's just not going to do well. They're just going to fall over everywhere. So. Um, I usually try to trim those off and then you see here see those are all the I trimmed everything from the top to keep it this size so it's manageable and um, it's easier to work with when it's like this and then you don't have things all over the place and also if there's just too much growth uh, the reservoir is gonna dry up very quickly and you have to replace or um, uh, refill very very often Okay, so that leads to the next question. How often do you refill? Uh, in the beginning, uh, not very much. But at this stage here, they would drink this bucket down to half every three to four days, maybe. See, right now it's way down, probably half or, yeah, half left. So every three to four days, five days, it'll drink it down to half. Uh, then you would need to refill. So uh, refill it all the way to the top because this is a DWC method. You can refill all the way to the top. Uh, you can refill, which is topping it, about three times. And then you should change it out completely fresh and brand new nutrients. So uh, after three to four changes, uh, sometimes I'm lazy. <laughs> so uh, I'll clean out the container by using a, uh, a, a water transfer pump. Okay, this unit here, this is, uh, can be found on Amazon. I will post the link to where you can get it. Uh, the reason I want the manual pump is because I keep running out of battery. I just don't use it enough. And then once I went to get the pump that is battery operated, the battery runs out and I can't use it. So these here, this one actually works great. You put this in here, you, it has a, this little pump right here and you pump all of the water out and then uh, you replace it with the new nutrients. Uh, another way to do that is if you can uh, somehow keep the tomato standing up correctly, you can lift the lid, lift the roots, and then put a brand new bucket in with nutrients and replace it that way. So if you have two similar buckets and you have a way to lift it, then you can change it that way. That is the easiest. But as you can see, my plants have fallen over and I can't do that. So that's the reason why I use this pump uh, to suck the water out clean it up a little bit. It's always good to, once you uh, suck all the water out, uh, pour fresh water, just plain water in there and uh, allow it to circulate for like a few hours and then suck that water out. That way the roots is not, um, you know, have the, all the residue left over and all that stuff and it's easier for your plant. And uh, another question I get asked is, uh, do you pH the nutrients? And as, as uh, I did in the video, I, and how I showed it is exactly how it's done. I don't pH, I don't measure EC, I don't do any of that. Uh, is that a good idea? Probably not. It's always best to pH. Make sure your pH is around 5.9 to 6. I think that is the best range for tomato and uh, most plants anyway. Uh, so it's a good idea to take check pH. I just don't because... Um, 
<laughs> it works for me. You know, it depends on your water. You know how 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 hard or soft your water is. You may not need to, or you may need to. Okay, so the next question is,、uh, what is the light hour for your plant and tomato plant here?、Uh, the hour is ten、uh, hours. So it doesn't matter when it's on, doesn't matter when it's off. Just as long as it's ten hours a day, it should work just fine. Uh, eight to ten is good, but usually I leave it on ten for peppers and tomato. So、uh, my light only comes on in the evening because I, I that's how I set it. And the reason for that is because I, I I have this in the garage. So in the summertime, like right now, it's extremely hot in the in the daytime. So if if I turn this on in the daytime with the combination of the the, the sun beating down into my garage, the tent can easily exceed a hundred degrees Fahrenheit. So that's why I wait into the evening where the sun is down,、uh, it's cooled a little, and then when the light comes on, it doesn't overheat the plant. So that's why I run it in the evening. And the same thing in the winter time, I also run it in the evening because in the evening it is very very cold, and so with the light being on in the evening, it helps heat up a little bit. So <laughs> that's kind of the reverse effect. Of the summertime, but I only run it in the evening, so that's how it's set. It sets,、uh, it turns on in the evening and it turns off in the morning. So ten hours a day. And the same thing with the pump. The pump is、uh, also on the same、uh, timer as everything. So when the light is off, the pump is off.、Uh, and then people were wondering if the pump is off, would that kill the plant? No, it would not. The pump could be off for two to three days, and the plant would still be fine.、Uh, there is enough oxygen already being pumped in there、uh, that the plant can use while the pump is off. So don't worry about the pump being off for 24 hours. Don't worry about it being off for two days.、Uh, if it comes back on, it should be fine. But don't leave it off for a week、uh, with the plant's、uh, roots submerged underwater. Then that's going to be a problem. Okay, so、uh, those are just some simple uh, questions uh, that I want to go through quickly. So、uh, here we are going to pick some fruits, and I have a ton of fruits, and I had to prune because there's just so much fruit weighing down on the tomato, and these fruits are not small fruit; they're very large fruit. So you can see, I mean, they they're just very heavy. You see here,、uh, the fruits just hanging, and flowers still forming. And so、yeah, there's fruits on the ground. There's fruit in there. It's just a pretty good amount. And I've been using a bunch of these already. So、uh, the 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 more you pick, the more they come back. You see these these baby ones are starting to form. And so eventually those are going to be very big tomatoes. And you see there that one is starting to grow right there. I may need to cut that off to keep it under control. So I don't I don't want. More growth, you see. So they they keep putting out new suckers, and the new suckers will grow and grow and grow, and will have more flowers, and they will keep growing, and then that sucker will produce more suckers. So that's just how tomato. As long as they have a、uh, nutrient source, a food source, and water source, they will just grow like crazy. And、uh, you see these here; those are roots. Tomato usually do that.、Uh, if it has moisture or whatever, they they can just、uh, sprout root in the air. It, it looks really weird, but、uh, you can. Cut that off and plant it, and you can get a new plant. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick some fruits.、Uh, wow, that's a good size one here. So let's go ahead and pick that. I don't know how ready this is. This is a, a personal variety that I just started growing last year, and、uh, I I don't quite know when it is ready because even when it's ready, it is very very firm. So it's a great variety that produces a lot. Of Of large fruit and that that、uh, doesn't crack. They don't crack very often, even in heavy rain. So、um, again, I don't I don't know、uh, really how to dial these in yet, but I have to grow it a little bit more to find out. So let me go ahead and pick two fruits. Okay, there we go. Look at these. These are pretty nice size. They're very nice and firm. I love these. Okay, so let's go take these inside and give it a try. Okay, here are the tomatoes that I just picked. Look at these beauties! They are nice and firm, and man, they look so good. So let's go ahead and cut these open and see what it looks like inside.
Wow, look at that. Exactly how I like them. They're nice and thick on the inside, very thick wall, and a very firm tomato. Let's give it a smell real quick. Smells like a fruit. Doesn't smell like a tomato at all. Okay, so let's try it out. Okay, here are the tomatoes. Let's give these a try. So we'll give them a, a good sniff test. So many people that grow tomatoes or have been trying to grow to, uh, hydroponic tomatoes have been wondering if the taste uh, is the same as uh, soil grown tomatoes. And I have grown them over the years and I'm telling you, you cannot tell. Sometimes the one in hydroponic tastes better. Wow, it smells just like a fruit. Uh, doesn't have any tomato smell to it. it smells nice and sweet. Okay, so uh, let's give these a try. Wow. Amazing flavor. It's so sweet. Has, has a little bit of the citrus um, sweetness. Wow, it reminds me of like a tangerine. I'm trying to think if it tastes like a tomato and I, I don't think it tastes anything like a tomato. Wow, this is so good. Mmm. Okay, for those that don't like tomato flavor, wow, this thing is amazing. There is no way you can tell this is a tomato. Very nice and sweet with that slight citrus sourness, but the citrus sourness, which is like a tangerine, where it's kind of sour and sweet at the same time. That's that's the the flavor that I'm getting here, man. I wish I have like a a whole bowl of these. <laughs> I'm probably gonna eat, eat them all <laughs> in one sitting. There's no way that you can tell this is a tomato. Hmm. Yeah, definitely like tastes like a tangerine. Wow, I should call this the Kingstar Tangerine Tomato. Wow. Man. <laughs> I want to go into my tent and pick every tomato and just eat it. It is that amazing. So this is uh, the second year that I'm growing this variety and I have no idea when it is ready. I just wait until the tomato is orange, completely orange, and it almost has like a translucent uh, look to it. When you look into it, there's like a it almost looked like a see-through uh, to the inside. That's when I pick them. Wow, that is just so good. <laughs> I didn't taste the seed at all. I think most cherry tomatoes, you don't really taste the seeds. So anyway, that is uh, the tomato that we grew in the, in the grow room. Uh, it's been there for a few months now and uh, it's probably gonna be there for a few more months. Uh, because it's so good. I might even clone them and put some outside and uh, you may see them in my garden update. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.